a patient that dislocates their shoulder. Uh, the dislocation almost always happens anterior inferiorly. And so if I were to look at, you know, uh, that's kind of the shape of a glenoid roughly. Um, and I've got my humeral head kind of superimposed here, right? If I dislocate my shoulder anterior inferior, that means the humeral head here dislocates in this direction. So it's going to dislocate from the glenohumeral joint or from the glenoid. So here it is. And then you've got the humeral head out here, right? So I'm dislocated. What happens though is that as I dislocate, the, the humeral head comes forward, but then as it springs back into place, a lot of times it's going to bang into that, the side of the glenoid. So as I dislocate, yes, it comes out, but instead of coming back and just reapproximating in the correct location, it's actually going to bang into the side of the glenoid. So then what happens is this, this area here is in jeopardy of the humeral head coming back in and banging into the anterior inferior aspect of the glenoid. And so what can happen there, what can happen there, it doesn't always happen, but what can happen there is that you can take this glenoid, get rid of this, perfectly nice glenoid, and you can actually lose bone due to it fracturing from the humeral head on the anterior inferior aspect. So you could actually create a fracture along the, glen along the glenoid there because the humeral head has dislocated and then popped back into place but hit the anterior inferior aspect of the glenoid first. And so if you lose a portion of your glenoid, you've got a problem. You've got an instability problem. Because even if I can get my humeral head back in place here approximated, I have lost glenoid bone here anteriorly. And so it doesn't matter how good of a labral repair or how much soft tissue you have there anterior inferiorly, you're not gonna be able to avoid losing that much bone, right? So it should come out like that. 